July the 8th, 1853, Port of Uraga, Japan. American officer Matthew Perry approaches the coast. His goal was to force the archipelago to open up to international trade. After several cannon salvos, the Japanese government got frightened and gave in to American demands. In fact, for over two centuries, Japan had withdrawn into itself, avoiding contact with foreigners as much as possible. This Edo period occurred during the years following the unification of Japan in the late 15th to early 16th century. This unification period, known as the Azuchi Momoyama, lasted about 30 years. It put an end to the bloody episode of the civil wars, which had ravaged the country for more than a century. Therefore, let's go back to this important transitional phase, and let's ask ourselves how some warlords managed to impose their views on others, and to forge the destiny of a country. Japan, during the 16th century, is prey to violent civil wars. These conflicts resulted from a progressive weakening of the central power to the detriment of the daimyos, the local lords. The Japanese authorities have a unique character. The Tenno, the celestial sovereign, which appeared in the 7th century, coexists with the Shogun, whose role became official in the 11th century, during the struggles against the barbarians. The Shogunate is a military dictatorship, operated as a field headquarters. It takes the name Bakufu, meaning government of the tent. Two aristocracies coexist, the imperial court in Kyoto, guardian of traditions, and the Bakufu, whose center varies according to the clan of the Shogun. Moreover, the names of the great periods of Japanese history come from the place where the shogunate is installed, which is dynastic. For instance, the Muromachi period corresponds to the district of Kyoto, where the Ashikaga clan is settled, which will lead the shogunate for more than two centuries. The shogun relies on local lords, the daimyos, whose name has evolved according to the periods. They were basically shugo, provincial governors, with rather limited competences. They were supposed to maintain order and control the warriors of their province. However, often residing in Kyoto, they had to send representatives to their provinces, shugodai, who gradually gained power. All of these shugo and shugodai will start to claim lands, as well as small local lords, to whom will be added ambitious warriors, who will make a destiny for themselves in the army. This period of the Shugo Daimyo turns into the period of the Sengoku Daimyo, the Daimyo of the period of the provinces at war. The 15th century saw violent civil wars between clans to seize power. This Sengoku period started in 1477. These warlords share a significant aspect, the will to unify Japan, and the respect of the emperor's authority are common to these warriors, who will nevertheless ravage the country. Following the assassination of Shogun Yoshinori in 1441, the Ashikaga shogunate was weakened. The daimyos tried to take over the shogunate based on succession conflicts. For a century, these wars weakened the central power of the Ashikaga clan, while the provinces saw a political affirmation of their power. Some peripheral territories developed, but no warlord managed to impose his authority. But then, three men, considered the unifiers of Japan, enter the scene. Oda Nobunaga is the first. He was from the small province of Owari and owned very little land. He succeeded his father in 1551. His first task was to unify the Oda clan, and to eliminate all opposition in the Owari province, 
which he achieved after a tough fight with rival relatives. In 1560, the great clan chief Imagawa Yoshimoto marched on the imperial capital, Kyoto, to help the weakened Ashikaga shogunate. He led an army of about 25,000 men. Oda Nobunaga, having only 3,000 men, decided to stop him. He benefited from a violent storm to bypass Yoshimoto's positions and attacked him by surprise. His objective? To eliminate Yoshimoto as quickly as possible to create panic in his ranks. The Battle of Okehazama was a success. This famous victory gave Oda Nobunaga an extraordinary notoriety across all Japan. Gradually, he extended his territory by rallying many warriors to his cause. In 1568, he marched on Kyoto to place another member of the Ashikaga clan, thus a legitimate ruler, at the head of the shogunate. He conquered 18 castles and subdued the clans that were in his way. Nobunaga used the young shogun as a puppet, then crushed him militarily. The Ashikaga shogunate came to an end and so did the Muromachi era. Then, Nobunaga attacked the powerful Asakura clan and found himself in a rather delicate situation after having been betrayed. He's caught in a pincer. The situation becomes difficult. With the support of two great generals, Hideyoshi and Togukawa Iyasu, he fought back. The Asakura clan was defeated. Nobunaga's territory is enlarged a little more. Each in turn, the great clans of the Sengoku period are defeated. Nobunaga capitalized on his luck. Daimyo Takeda Shingen, perhaps his only real rival, died in 1573. Then his very powerful clan, the Takeda, attacked Nobunaga. The final confrontation took place in 1575 during the Battle of Nagashino, which marked a turning point in the history of Japan. Oda Nobunaga will use a new weapon imported by the Europeans, the musket. Nobunaga and Ieyasu lined up several rows of muskets behind wooden barriers in order to halt the Takeda cavalry charge, which collapsed under the rolling fire of the arquebusiers. The lancers impaled the horsemen who managed to pass. The samurai put an end to the last few resistors. The Takeda clan then experienced an inevitable decline. One of the greatest clans of the Sengoku period died out. Nobunaga then expanded his territory towards the west and the north. His last great rival, a notorious alcoholic, died of cancer a few months later. Luck smiled upon the Oda clan. Nobunaga then declared, from now on, Japan is mine. However, the reorganization of Japan also involved a fierce repression of the Buddhist sects who, out of fear of Nobunaga, called for a revolt. The Japanese were then Shintoists or Buddhists, and sectarian aberrations were numerous, with a great influence on the working classes. The Iko sect was atrociously annihilated in 1574, with nearly 20,000 civilian and religious deaths. Nobunaga inherited the nice title of Demon King. Religion lost its autonomy and had to answer to the administration. Another threat from Europe, Christianity, was initially tolerated. Nevertheless, the expulsion of the missionaries and the persecutions of Christians started a little later, from 1587. However, all these battles should not make us forget the reforms of Nobunaga. He began to set up a land register around Kyoto, granted franchises to certain markets to revitalize trade, abolished the corporatist privileges of certain trades, built roads linking the major cities, and developed international trade, notably with China and Korea. He built an impressive seven-story castle in Azuchi as a symbol of his power. But his dream of unification was shattered by the betrayal of a close friend. One of his lieutenants plotted a coup, forcing Oda Nobunaga to commit seppuku, a ritual suicide. Upon hearing the news, 
Nobunaga's most talented general, Hideyoshi, is furious. He decides to avenge the death of his master. He defeats the traitor, Ekechi Mitsuhide, in the Battle of Yamazaki. Hideyoshi comes from the lower classes, and after having led a vagabond life, he entered the service of Nobunaga in 1554. His humble origins made him extremely popular, but it was his military genius that allowed him to rise to the top. After Nobunaga's death, he eliminated his potential rivals, notably Oda's sons, and tried to continue the work of his predecessor. He brought together under his aegis several great daimyos, including Ieyasu, with whom he had had a bit of a quarrel over power. They were reconciled with the goal of unifying Japan. The number of territories under his authority grew, and the imperial court conferred on him the title of Kanpaku, Grand Chancellor, then Daijo Daijin, Minister of Supreme Affairs. He was thus legitimate in the eyes of the emperor, but was not yet officially shogun. Apart from his alliances, he did not hesitate to subdue other territories militarily. He built a huge castle in Osaka, a strategic place to watch the imperial capital and to establish his power. The daimyos were then moved or their domains confiscated to avoid any future rebellion. His clan was called Toyotomi, giving him his name for posterity, Toyotomi Hideyoshi. This completed the second phase of the unification of Japan. Hideyoshi continued the reforms of Nobunaga. He implemented systematically the Taiko Kenchi, surveying and cadaster. As a reminder, land surveying is the technique to measure the agricultural land. The cadaster collects the data in a register. But in 16th century Japan, the measurement methods varied according to the province. Hideyoshi standardized the process. Based on these area measurements and the evaluation of the quality of the land, the production capacity is estimated and entered into the cadaster. Potential incomes are converted into quantities of rice. This unit of measurement is the koku, a unit of measurement that corresponds to the amount of rice a person eats in a year. The other major reform of Toyotomi Hideyoshi is the katana gari, sword hunting. Weapons were confiscated from peasants. Travel outside a province was forbidden. The goal of this was to tie the peasant to the land. A strict separation between warriors and farmers was imposed. In concrete terms, a warrior could no longer cultivate a piece of land. Instead, he had to choose between the status of a peasant and a samurai, in which case he had to go to the city of the daimyo to serve him. These various reforms structured Japanese society for centuries to come. Hideyoshi began to see the influence of the Christian missionaries on the population and the risks it posed to his personal power. He began to expel them in 1587, which is considered the beginning of the Christian persecutions. Christianity was eventually banned from 1612 onwards, during the process of closing Japan to the world, characteristic of the Edo period that followed. Toyotomi Hideyoshi wanted to unify Japan, but even more than that, he wanted to create an empire and turned his attention to Korea, an ally of China, but much less powerful than the Middle Kingdom. An external war also had the advantage of uniting the daimyo in a common goal. In 1592, the expedition began. Korea was invaded quickly, but China reacted quickly too and sent troops. Cornered, the armies of Hideyoshi, who did not participate in the expedition himself, retreated to their island. Hideyoshi's authority was weakened, and his finances were at their lowest following the disastrous campaign. He died in 1598 and appointed his five-year-old son as his heir. Two councils were created before his death, the Council of the Five Tairo in charge of important state affairs, and the Council of the Five Bugyo 
in charge of administrative affairs. Obviously, a fight over power broke out between these regents. The most powerful of the daimyo, whom we have already mentioned, Tokugawa Ieyasu, placed himself as the successor to the work of Nobunaga and Hideyoshi. Opposition to him crystallized around Ishida Mitsunari. He federated an army in the west, while Ieyasu allied himself with clans located in the east. The decisive clash took place in 1600, the Battle of Sekigahara, which sees two armies of nearly 80,000 men facing each other. The outcome was undecided. Ieyasu had offered land to any enemy daimyos who joined him. In the battle, he fired cannons on the undecided men to push them to make a quick decision. The Kobayakawa clan betrayed the army of the west to join Ieyasu. Tokugawa Ieyasu is victorious and imposes himself as the new master of Japan. The defeated troops disperse and the enemy warlords are captured, executed or driven to suicide. In 1603, Tokugawa Ieyasu was appointed shogun. He set up the Tokugawa Bakufu in the city of Edo, the present Tokyo. A new era begins, which will be named the Edo period. However, his power is not yet totally assured. The Toyotomi clan consider Ieyasu a usurper. The new shogun decides to take action. Using the pretext of an attempted assassination by the Toyotomi clan, he attacks the castle of Osaka, where the supporters of Hideyoshi's son are. Osaka castle is burnt down. Hideyoshi's son and his mother die in the flames. From then on, Japan was unified under the Tokugawa clan, which, unlike Hideyoshi, succeeded in imposing hereditary succession, ensuring stability. But for peace to last, a series of radical reforms is necessary. The state is reorganized. The daimyos will be obliged to live in Edo every other year. Their families will be taken hostage in the capital, preventing any desire for rebellion. The ports and the mines will be drastically controlled, guaranteeing the control of the monetary system. The country will gradually cut itself off from the outside world, keeping some contacts with Korea, China and Holland. For a foreigner, setting foot in Japan was punishable by death. All these reforms will allow Japan to enter one of the most prosperous periods of its history. The Tokugawa Shogunate, or the Edo period, lasts until 1868 and the Meiji Restoration, which will make Japan enter the Industrial Era. In the span of 30 years, between 1573 and 1603, thanks to three unifiers, Oda Nobunaga, Toyotomi Hideyoshi and Tokugawa Ieyasu, Japan managed to extricate itself from the terrible civil wars of the Sengoku era. This period is now considered the transition between medieval and modern Japan. With the introduction of firearms, the development of merchant cities, tax reforms and the restructuring of power, the foundations were laid for the development of a more peaceful society. Besides the battles necessary to take power, it is above all the unifying aim of these three warriors that will be remembered by posterity. We hope you enjoyed this video. Please feel free to give it a thumbs up if you like it and to share it as much as possible. And don't forget to subscribe to the channel to get notifications of future content. Thanks again for watching and see you soon for a new episode.